when I get into the home, all familiar faces. My best friend was there. Um, just everyone, like girls that I knew, was in this house lined up, and I was like, "Wait, so you? What did I, this is you starting? You online? Pre, yes, this is this, pre. Yes, this is pre. This is pre hazing. This is not. I haven't been to Rush yet. I haven't got. Haven't signed no papers yet. Oh, this I is a whole nother vibe. Like, I'm yes. talking the PWI. So I don't know mm -hmm. about this. No, so, no ma'am. I hazed before I got hazed. So in this video, I actually brought my girl Tia on to share her denouncing testimony. But before I actually get into the video, if you have not already, hit that subscribe button for your girl one time for the one time. So this is a highly anticipated video from myself. I've been really wanting to do this video for like two years. But so this is part three of my denouncing testimony series. Okay. And so for part three, I decided to bring one of my best friends. But no, so when I denounced Delta in 2021, I have a, a cousin, her name is Brittany, and she recommended that I talk to her friend mm -hmm. that had already denounced. And I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm no new friends, I'm good. But the Holy Spirit was like, you might want to, you know, go on and go on and hit her up. So we um, ended up connecting and we've been best friends yes. ever since. And so I really want her to share her amazing powerful denouncing testimony mm -hmm. of how God brought her out of Delta. Okay. okay. So let's start pre-Delta. Okay? okay. Can we go, can we go back? Can we back, like back? Back? Yeah. Take it back. So how did you actually get introduced to Delta? Wow. So it is, it's very deep. My story is very deep. Yes, it is. Um, so let me just take you back to when I was a little girl. Okay. Okay. So Ooh, I all am back. all the way back. <laughs> yes. So I am from Little Rock, Arkansas, mm -hmm. um, and living down South. And so living down South, like Greek organizations, that's a big thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, we are introduced to the Greek organization of black Greek letter organizations yeah. at a very early age. And so mm -hmm. I just remember being a little girl, I um, started going to this summer camp um, when I was around maybe seven or eight years old. Mm -hmm. um, it was a summer camp and it was at a uh, black college actually, a okay. summer camp. And so mm -hmm. um, during the summertime, I would go here and this program, it was for uh, children who came from like low income families mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they really prided themselves on like the education part and just kind of pouring into us and things like that. But yeah. um, I just remember going to the summer camp and it started out really well for me. Um, I was able to meet really great, you know, other students and things like that. Mm -hmm. But there was one thing that kind of stood out to me when I would go to this summer camp. Mm -hmm. And that was the actual students that attended the college. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just remember like walking around this college, uh, the campus, going mm -hmm. to like the cafeteria and things like that as a little girl. Mm -hmm. And I would see like these you know, boys and girls that were students, but something was so significant about them. Mm -hmm. And that was the letters that they were wearing on their ah, shirts. They were green. They were green. Okay. Um, and so I was just, I don't know, I was fascinated with it. Mm -hmm. I was fascinated with the shirts that they were wearing. I wanted to know more. I was curious to know more about what it was, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes the students, they would come and actually help us mm -hmm. um, with our summer program. You know, they would do like mm -hmm. different activities and things like that with us. Mm -hmm. um, and so so I just became curious. I just remember mm -hmm. seeing these black, you know, women or girls and boys around our campus. Yeah. Um, and I started asking questions about it. Um, and so it started there. Yeah. I will never forget. I was in the seventh or eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And one of my like favorite principals, she was Greek is what I came to find oh. out. Um, and so she was an AK mm -hmm. at the time, or she still is an AK, I believe. But mm -hmm. I just remember being in seventh, eighth grade. Um, she was a person I really looked up to. Mm -hmm. I really just admired the way she carried herself. Mm -hmm. And so um, I remember I was at school one day and I was getting off the bus. Mm -hmm. And as I'm walking into the school in middle school, um, I remember her getting at her car. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. She got mm -hmm. out her car and I was like, huh, hey, you know, such and such. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing her license plates. Uh. 
It was her license plate, and they had it had AK on there. And I was like, "What is this? Yeah, like, what is going on? What I, I keep seeing. I remember seeing this at my summer camp. Yeah. So I went to her. I remember one day, random, I was going to the bathroom, and she was coming out of her office. Mm -hmm. And I ran up to her and I go, "Hey, um, I have a question." And she was like, "You know what is this? A little girl at the time." Mm -hmm. And I was like, um, "Are you?" And I, listen, this is how much I did not know you say? about about Greek organizations. I was like, are you a part of Alpha Kappa Alpha? <laughs> and she was like, and she started laughing and she was like, Alpha Kappa Alpha? And I was like, yeah. And so she told me she was a member. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just had questions about it, but what really kind of drew me in even more at a young age mm -hmm. is that one day she came to me, she gave me a folder. Mm. And this folder had a lot of like information mm. in it. Yeah, it had a lot of like AKA stuff in it. What? Yeah, so it had like chants in it, it had songs in it. And so, because I had this information, I started looking it up online. Wow, mm -hmm. on Google. I will, I don't even know who computer I was using at the time, but I started researching it. Yeah, and so I just remember as a little girl, I would sit at my um, in my computer and I would just sit there and I would listen to the chants and I would listen to the songs and yeah what? yes mm -hmm. yeah it started really young wow. and so that's and I think that's very significant because like I said a lot of people who are in Greek organizations they are grooming mm -hmm. their children mm -hmm. at a very young age yes. as soon as they come out of the womb they're already putting onesies on them and saying they are future this mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's where it started wow okay so mm -hmm. then you got to college mm -hmm. and what happened when you first got on campus Cause so, you got you got an AKA, Honda, <laughs> but you didn't cross AKA. Right. <laughs> so, so no, so making me check. Yeah. So going to college, mm -hmm. yes. So like you said, everything I didn't pledge AKA, right? So yep. what happened? Uh -huh. Um. So y'all, like when I got to college my freshman year, mm -hmm. um. Now, mind you, this folder that I had, I kept it up until it's time for me to go to college. Mm. Yeah. This AKA folder. I know, right? Um, because I didn't have a whole lot of information. So that's, that's what I went, went into college with. Mm -hmm. Um, but I remember going into college my freshman year. And of course, that's giving me like firsthand experience of seeing all of the Divine Nine on the campus, right? Mm -hmm. So I just remember, uh, being in my freshman year of college. And that's when my best friend and I, we are still best friends to this day. Mm -hmm. Um, we became best friends our uh, freshman year in college. Okay. And so it just got to a point where we started to know Know more about the Greek organizations mm -hmm. and her and I started to have conversation about you know what we really wanted to be mm -hmm. and so I remember asking her like hey like do you want to join an organization and what do you want to be she said a delta mm -hmm. and so I was like okay why you know yeah. in my mind this is the thing like when it comes to Greek organizations you have these stereotypes yeah. so in my mind you know with being this young girl given mm -hmm. this voter I'm thinking like AKA, like, you know, that's what, that's what it's going to be because that's yeah. all I knew. Yeah. Um, but when I got to college and her and I, we became really good friends. We started talking about the organizations and I started mm -hmm. to actually do like real research mm -hmm. on the organizations. Mm -hmm. And so she kind of gave me her reason why. And as I began to do my research at that time, I felt like, you know, I Delta was more of who I was and yeah. me when we're looking at when we're looking at the stereotypes. So yeah. that's what kind of changed mm -hmm. my mind from, you know, giving this folder and like kind of grooming me in, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um and now I'm able to kind of make my decision for myself. And so yeah, like I decided I want to be a Delta and the reason why that was is because when we got on my campus, um I went to University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, mm -hmm. it's an HBCU mm -hmm. and um at that time the Delta's they actually was not running the yard. They wasn't really the popular ones. Uh -huh. However, I was also a cheerleader in college. And mm -hmm. so all of my friends and the ladies that I was around, we were all very well known girls on the, on the campus. Yeah. We were very active and involved. And so mm -hmm. as we started to talk and become closer, we all had this mindset, like we wanted to come in and change come on the now. way the Deltas, you know, yeah. were looked at. And yeah. so mm -hmm. that's kind of like where it started. It's why I changed my mind. And that's where it, you know, yeah, it mm -hmm. came about with Delta. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just, that's how my decision came about. That's what I did. Okay, so <laughs> let's keep going. Okay. <laughs> so you expressed like your like how was the the pre was there any pre, pre haze and pre pledge yes. pre anything? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so let's get into that. 
So yes, it was. Um, actually, my freshman year, when my best friend and I, we decided that Delta is what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. We were kind of, we knew some Deltas around mm -hmm. the yard, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of, it was actually the year, the time, like when we decided to actually express our interest, it was right before school was out for the summer mm -hmm. of our freshman year. Okay. And um, one of the Delta, she worked in our uh, dorm dorm mm -hmm. residence. She was RA. She was RA. <laughs> and so I remember we were like scared and nervous. Like, we want to talk to her. Like, can we go and talk to her? Yeah. But I think one reason that we decided to do it is because she was, I believe, about to graduate. Or she had already okay. graduated, which is still there. Yeah, she on her way out. She was on her <laughs> way out. So we like, oh, that's, you know. So <laughs> we go to her and we actually talk to her about it. You know, like, okay. we're, we're like, hey, we have some questions, if you don't mind. And she was very open to, you know, okay. our questions. And so, um, because she wasn't really able to do a whole lot with us, mm -hmm. she was just like, hey, you know, I'll give you some advice of what you need to do or what to expect. Mm -hmm. She was like, and I'll give your name to the ladies, mm -hmm. the Delta. I'm gonna recommend so, you. So yeah, recommend. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we had kind of like the whole summer to just kind of relax, you know, oh. like, but one thing that she did tell us at the time was, you know, be mindful of like your reputation, mm -hmm. you know, your social media and things mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so we went the whole summer, we were okay, but man, when we came back to school, it was like they knew, like they knew, yeah. Mm -hmm. But Although we had expressed our interest um, at the time to her, we mm -hmm. had to kind of do it again to someone that was there on the yeah, yard, right. you know, that was yeah. active. Mm -hmm. um, and so because we were cheerleaders, we there were a lot of ladies who were a part of the Divine Nine. There were cheerleaders and uh, dancers. Mm -hmm. So um, when it was like actually time for us to go because Rush was about to come up and everything, mm -hmm. uh, I remember going to one of my cheerleading mates. Uh, she was a Delta and she was mm -hmm. a, our captain at the time mm -hmm. and I just remember um, I you know hit her up or whatever one day randomly and she told me to come here at this time to like an office she you know when she worked at the department mm -hmm. on, the, on the campus mm -hmm. and yeah I went to her and we're talking about you know everything like I'm telling her this is what I'm interested and she here's the thing she was actually very shocked that I came to her and I expressed my interest that I wanted to be a Delta. Okay. Um, because in her mind, it was, she thought I was either going to go AKA mm -hmm. or she was like, I thought you were honestly like too cool to join anything. Like, oh, I didn't think, you know, so, cool. yeah, so she was just kind of like, I didn't think you wanted to join because my, like, You're too how cool I, for us. How, like, it was just how I was back then, like my attitude, my character, like yeah. you would have thought I just didn't want to be around like people, you know, yeah. so yeah. she was very shocked. And so, um, I just remember expressing my interest being very nervous mm -hmm. um and i remember her one of the questions that she asked me at the time was how do you feel about hazing pre pre yeah mm -hmm. pre hazing mm -hmm. yeah i remember she asked me about that and i was very firm at the time like this is not what i want to do i don't want to haze do anything before i actually get online yeah um that's just not me like i'm not i'm not doing it yeah you know okay. like and she was like okay you know cool Okay. But what happened? Because so, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Right. It changed. It changed. It changed. And so um, I want to say, I'm, I'm not sure how long went, how time, like how long, Probably you know, time went by. And I just remember y'all, like one day I was in my dorm. Um, I had just came back to campus from um, the weekend of being home. Because mm -hmm. I used to go home a lot. Mm -hmm. So I remember like being in my, uh, in my dorm one night, just chilling. And I get a phone call from a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And this friend of mine, um, I did not know that she wanted to be a Delta. Mm. So she calls me and she's like, hey, come downstairs. I'm like, okay. Because she was from Palm Bluff. She had her own car and everything. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? She would not tell me what was going on. Yeah. yeah. What's about to go on? So I'm like, what is happening? So um, I come down, I get into the car, and we're just driving. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hey, what's up? Like, what's going on? Yeah. And she, like, she didn't tell me, like, much of anything. So she's just in the car. I'm just in the nothing. car. Just in the car. And she's just, just like, you. right. And she's just like, oh, we're about to go somewhere and you'll find out once we get there. And I'm like, okay. Like, and I, you know, I trusted her. So it was like, okay, like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So we get to our, you know, destination. Mm -hmm. And from there, like, I just remember walking into like this house I did not know. And when I got, when I get into the home, all familiar faces, my best friend was there. 
Um, just everyone, like girls that I knew, was in this house lined up, and I was like, "Wait, so you what? This, did I, this is you started with you online? Pre, yes, this is this, pre. Yes, this is pre. This is pre hazing. This is not. I haven't been to Rush yet. I haven't got haven't signed no papers yet. Oh, I this is a whole nother vibe. Like, I'm yes. not from the PWI. So I don't know mm -hmm. about this. No, so what? no, ma'am. I hazed before I got hazed. Like before I was like, act, before I even knew that I was, I got accepted as a member. Yeah. I went through a hazing process. Well, we did pre-hazing too. It was yeah. running some errands. It wasn't mm -hmm. lining up with nobody. Like what? Okay, so, okay. So, this don't die. Do Interesting. What? Yeah. So I get into the house and I'm just looking at everybody like, what is going on? Yeah. You know? And they're like, and I just knew. That's I dangerous saw, though because mm -hmm. what is? Yeah. I know, right? So yeah, I get there and I see, um, you know, the Deltas, like some mm -hmm. of the women that's from Delta and everything. I see the ladies, I see my best friend. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, and they just quiet. And I'm like, okay, and they just like, get in line. And I remember they put me right next to my best friend. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like standing there. And, it, and from that point, it was serious. Like it was just yeah. like, whoa. And I didn't say anything, but in my mind, I'm like, wow. You know? What's going on? And so I just remember, remember them like talking to us. They are uh, wow. saying different things and uh, asking questions and things like that. And so what I found out is that some of them were already pre-hazing and they were just adding more girls that they felt like they, they could trust. Mm. So I think what happened with myself was they knew I wanted to be a Delta, but I think they wanted to make sure, can, I, can I trust her? Yeah. So I think that maybe other girls had put out my name like, yeah. So I was brought in to what was already going on. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, yeah, like they were giving us information. And so... For pre-hazing, anybody don't they're not familiar with that, like it's basically where they choose girls that they feel like they can trust, they can groom, they can prim, they can just prepare for rush yeah. and to go to rush. And they it's kinda like they already know who they're gonna pick, honestly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and so that's what was like, happening. One thing mm -hmm. one thing that's really dangerous about pre hazing, which I don't understand why it happens, mm -hmm. is because a lot of the girls that they pre haze don't even make lines. Don't make lines. So it's a lot of girls yeah. now that got pre hazed, spent their money Got talked yep. to crazy, probably even got hit, and didn't even cross into no organization. Did not cross, did not get picked. Yeah. That's crazy. So did that happen with y'all? Yeah, it was a lot of girls that either like they fell off or they just they didn't get picked, which is why like they felt some some kind of way yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so keep going. Okay. So yeah, so they're, you know, talking to us, telling us, you know, what's going on and everything. Because in and, and what happened was they really had us believing that be, like pre-hazing was, it was an honor, it was a privilege, yeah. it was a thing. Mm -hmm. Because in their mind, it's like, we're giving you information that yeah. you actually need for Rush or mm -hmm. to become a Delta ahead of time. Yeah. So it's a it's a price to pay. I'm yeah. getting pre-hazed, right? Yeah, so, you're excited about yeah, it. Yeah, you're though. excited. Yeah. But I will say that um, I just remember like I had like that mm -hmm. night, I actually had got like a little bit like firsthand experience of how the actual process was going to be. Mm -hmm. They were talking to us, any, uh, to us any kind of way. Yeah. Um, they would say certain things. And in my mind, I'm just kind of like, I'm confused a yeah. little bit. You like, know? what is this? And throw you right in there. Um, but wow. I remember when we left that night, mm -hmm. um, I did feel like I couldn't go back. I couldn't mm -hmm. not go back as in like not go back to behave. Mm -hmm. As in I can't go back on my answer as in I don't want to do this. I felt like I needed to do this because I oh, saw my. I had to keep going forward. I had to keep going forward. I didn't. Okay. Think, I didn't want to go back, as in like telling them like, "Hey, I'm not. I yeah, don't want to be here." Because yeah. I had just told you know the the girl that I expressed interest that this is not something I was interested in. <laughs> and she so why am I here? <laughs> just from there, we were pre hazing. Like we, it wasn't going like every single night or mm -hmm. anything like mm -hmm. that, but. Um, it got to a point, uh, I think by this time, I'm in my junior year. So, how long were you pre-hazing? For a year? So, okay, so, so more year? actually, I didn't pre-haze long, and that's mm -hmm. because, okay, so yeah, let me take you back. So, I didn't pre-haze long because mm -hmm. the pre-haze when I first started, it was for the rush that was coming up, like, soon, right? Mm -hmm. So, what happened was, I actually stopped pre-hazing because... When I got my grades mm -hmm. um, to, see, to see if I was going to be able to actually go to Russ and, Russ and do it, mm -hmm. I didn't really have a GPA. 
Yeah. Mm. What so did you get? It was like it was two seven five. Two seven five the time. Mm -hmm. I think I was like short, like two seven two, Yeah, it was really yeah, like by that. Yeah. But what happened was I ended up going to rush anyway. I act I ended up filling out the packet and mm -hmm. everything. Because in my mind I was like, I'm gonna still go forth and put it in and mm -hmm. just see if my GPA was the only thing that would keep me from yeah. making it. And yeah. that's what it was. So I didn't make it the first time. Okay. Here's the thing, this is why so many people believe that God has a say so or God is within this because um, the year that I actually went out my first time mm -hmm. um, and I found out I didn't get it because of my letter uh, that year actually the whole line got dropped mm -hmm. like they didn't go they didn't move forward with anything mm -hmm. yeah so it looked like a blessing so in my eyes it looked like a blessing yeah. in my eyes it's like okay God mm -hmm. has given me a chance to go and work on my GPA, yes. do what I gotta do, yes. and it's it's I'm gonna be prepared for you know the next year. And so yeah. that was like a lot of us though. Yeah, so I didn't get it the, the first time, but the line was dropped. Um, and so then moving forward, going coming back with my junior senior year, uh, I went through the same thing. Mm -hmm. Got pre haze. Mm -hmm. At this point, they know us. They're comfortable with us. Yeah. So the hazing is getting kind of you know it's getting serious. Yeah. I remember um, it got to a point where. Um, I literally had to keep like headphones in my in my ear a lot because they were calling like this. I could be in mm. class and I'm like ducking down like in my desk with headphones on and talking to me saying you got a class and go do this. Um, this is still pre. Wow, that's so awesome. <laughs> this is right, still pre hazing. And so I just remember like you just I would be walking around campus and you just never know when they're going to hit you up, like contact yeah. you. And so um, it got to that point they were constantly calling me. I had to go and do this or yeah. do you know just do whatever they they were they were re uh, requesting. Mm -hmm. And so um, it went from that to now I'm going to rush. Mm -hmm. You know, going to rush. Uh, I'm prepared because once again, because they're hazing us, they mm -hmm. are preparing us though. They tell us yeah. what we need, what we need to wear and things like that. So to me, I thought it was a good thing. I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, exchange. Yeah. Um, so I go to Rush and everything. And it was like, even at Rush, they were hazing us. It was like, we walked through the door. They're like, you know, because they were already hazing us anyway, we could not, we had to be very careful on how we even showed up to the rush. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like, they made sure to, like, you know, my best friend and I, we did stay together because mm -hmm. they're like, well, if y'all separate now, people gonna be like, well, what's going yeah. on? So, yeah. we had to come in together at a certain time wow. and sit a certain time. Like, we couldn't, and then even after the rush, they made sure, like, we wasn't, like, talking to, like, the girls that were together, like, mm -hmm. you know, they, they were hazing already. Mm -hmm. They're like, y'all need to come together. Like, y'all yes. need to make sure you're not yes. talking so people make it, you know, make it obvious. Yes. Yes. So, um, so yeah, so that's what happened. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, long story short, I end up making it. Yeah. Um, all the girls, not all, but some of the girls that we were hazing, that were hazing with me um, beforehand, we made it. Yeah. And that's when the real process started. So, how was, like, the, the, pro the, the like actual, a, oh, yeah, like a high, high level overview? Because we can yeah. be online talk about what I happened. know, right? I know. So um, like a high level overview, how was being online? Yeah, being online... Man, it, I would say it was really, a, it was my manipulation to its like highest. There was yes. so much like brainwashing manipulation mm -hmm. that went on. Um, yeah. And for us, like it was a lot of us. It was only over about 30 some of that, that okay. you know, actually pledged together or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, just the, the stories that you really hear about us having to come, you know, meet at a central location at a certain time of the yeah. night. And here's the thing. Like, I just remember, like, throughout the day being on campus, like, mm -hmm. when it's daytime, going to classes, I was okay. But it's like, literally, I would watch the sun As go it down. Got dark. Yes. As it got dark, I started to get anxious. Yeah. I started to get nervous because yes. I knew at some fearful. point, fearful, yeah. the call was going to be coming through for me to answer yes. and have to go. Yes. So I just remember because I lived on campus, me and us lived on campus, so... There were some girls that lived off campus and they had their own home. So anytime, you know, when that call came, we had to meet up and link up or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would have to leave campus with, with clothes, with certain yeah. clothes on. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, my pledging clothes. Yeah. Um, I remember I was going to Walmart trying to find like the, the pledging clothes that we yes. needed, the all the right black ones. or whatever, the yeah. right ones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, yeah, I just remember, you know, when the sun would go down. We get that way for the call, and then we all having to, you know, get in certain cars, and we had to go and meet at our at our location. location. Um, and from there, we would change, and we would try to, you know, come together as sisters and try to come up with a plan on how, like, how we were going to be on the same page with yes. everything. Yeah. Did we know the answers to certain questions? Yes. Um, 
you know, just being there for each other. And so then, like, when we would get that call, they would say, you come here. It'd be, like, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Mind you, we have class the next day. Yes. So uh, we're getting in the car. They're telling us how many are to a car. Mm -hmm. um, yes. They're saying, like, oh, because such and such small, she can, you know. So we were, like, literally fitting into the car, trying to get packed somewhere, in. packed in, yep. being careful of the police. Um, but one of the mm -hmm. things that they would do is have one of the Deltas to actually drive us to the location, though. So they would pack us in people's cars, but they would have an actual Delta driving because we would be blindfolded sometimes. Oh, wow. For the majority of the time, actually. We didn't know where we were going. Um, and so I just remember, like, driving, like, far, far, far away from the campus uh, at nighttime. Oh, Lord. And, yeah, like, I mean, you're trying to, like, kind of peek, you know, yeah. at the car and see, like, where are we going? But the roads were dark. Um, and I just remember, like, when we were kind of, long story short, I remember us, we were down in some woods, because I just remember, like, driving on this dark road, no lights, nothing, yeah. and we would all of a sudden come to, like, um, a, like a rocky road, dirt road, because now you can feel the car kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. going somewhere, and they would mm -hmm. turn off the lights and everything, and then they would, we would just sit, and they would just say, um, we'll, you know, I'll come back and tell you guys when it's time to get the car. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, we whispering like, okay, y'all, like, you know, um, <laughs> Lord have mercy. But so another thing is so like they would also pack us in the cars by numbers. Because by the time we had numbers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we were like, because when we got out the car, we had to quickly li like link yes. up with our numbers. Yes. And we dragged me because we don't know where we're going. They're trying to yeah. pull us from the front because we're in line. They're pulling us at the car and everything, and we're having to link up. Wow. And from that point, um, were having to say in outside. It was outside. In the it was in the woods. Mm hmm. Yeah, it was in the woods outside at dark, in, at nighttime. Oh. And I just, you know, my pleasure process, it was, it was a lot. It yeah. was, like I said, mentally, physically, it took a lot. Um, yeah. You know, they would talk talk anyway to us, yeah. you know, curse us out, say certain things. Yeah. Um, I just remember one night I got very upset because eggs were thrown at us. Yes. Um, the egg that one night that was thrown at me, it didn't crack. So it like hit me in the stomach and I was like ready to fight. Yeah. And I'm like about to like move out of line. Yeah. My sister's like pulling me back, yeah. like, no, don't do it. Yeah. Um, and I just remember, you know, certain things we had to do. I had to uh push-ups, I had to um get on like, you know, uh chairs yeah. and on your, you know, elbow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, the smiley swipe, you know, yeah. everybody can go through that. Yeah. Um, there were paddling that was going yeah. on, you know. Yeah, so like yeah, mm -hmm. and I remember yeah. like um, they would do certain things just to kind of like humiliate us in front of everybody, everybody, you know? So, um, I remember one night they called me out of line, I had to sing one of the Delta songs. They know I'm not a singer or anything like that. So like I'm singing and I'm like, sing it like you mean it. And I'm singing it or whatever, like, you know, trying to sing it with my heart and soul. Yeah. And they're just laughing, you know, packing yeah. up and laughing and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I just remember one time, like I was so, so that was another thing too. I was so stressed out trying to keep up with you know my my school work yeah. my going to classes on time because here's the thing too a lot of the professors know like when when that season yeah. comes for pledging for mm -hmm. the, for Greek organizations, the professors so know. HBCUs. Sure. HBCUs, yeah. 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 They know because they're Greek. Our professors yes. are Greek. The chancellor is, uh, chancellor is Greek. So yeah, it's like, know. they know that time is coming. Mm -hmm. So I just remember, like, a lot of my professors would come to me. They're like, listen, I know what you're doing. I know what's going on. Um, but you need to make sure you don't, you're you in class. You have to figure it out. You have to figure it out. Yeah. So they knew I would leave class early and things like that. And they, they knew. Yeah. And that was the sad part because once once again, when we're joining these organizations, one of the things that they say is that we are a non-hazing organization. Yeah. But they know that these things are going on. Yes, every and organization. Every organization. Is going on. Exactly. And I just remember that I was so stressed out to the point where my hair was falling out, too. Wow. So I was a cheerleader. I had to look a certain way, you know, as a cheerleader. However, my hair was falling out. I would never forget I had a bald spot, literally, right in the back of my hair, mm. my head. And I had short, like, short uh, perm hair at the time, so it was really falling out because I hadn't had a perm yet because... You know, one of the things is that they're taking you through a purity yes. process. Yes. So you can't wear makeup. Mm -hmm. You cannot wear certain weed. colors. No weed. Yeah. Anything like that. So I was not getting my hair done. Yeah. I'm having to show up to basketball and football games looking like, what is, what's <laughs> going on with here? Yeah. I'm losing weight. You already small. Skin, right. Yeah. Skin, you know, I'm, I'm losing weight because I couldn't eat certain things. They call yeah. us like eating certain like fried yes. foods or sweets and things like that in the cafeteria yeah. they're like saying stuff to us yeah, you know so um so yeah i was i remember my hair was falling out and i just remember one night like online 
they like thought it was funny and they like cracked eggs all in my hair and they're like oh well you know maybe she if she get this protein from the egg her hair will grow back like it was just all this type of stuff i remember you know being a cheerleader i was little so they would say certain things like oh her bones are showing wow. and you know just certain like little stuff that they thought because the, the the goal was to try to Take that one thing that they knew that that, you, that maybe either an insecurity or if yeah. they thought that you thought that you were like all of this, they would try to use those things to kind of like break you down wow. and to come for you. But it, it didn't bother me. So they whatever they could cool. use to try to break you down and make you break and crack, yeah. that's what they tried to use. Ooh, so that's so hardcore. Yeah. For for the checker I crossed in, mm -hmm. they were a little bit more graceful. Like if mm -hmm. they saw like you were falling asleep, they were like, okay, come over to mm -hmm. my house mm -hmm. and go to sleep. Yeah. If your hair is falling out, okay, you're mm -hmm. gonna have to do something with this hair. Because, yeah. You know, like yeah. and don't get me wrong, they they try to help, they'll try to step in and try to like okay. you know, even I just remember um one of the things that I uh dealt with in college was um hy I was hyperglycemic. Yeah. So I needed like sugar to keep my, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And it yeah, and so I I just remember like one night I, the, it was so tough one night to the point where I hadn't eaten anything mm -hmm. um and a lot of times I didn't eat something I would get dizzy or yeah. feel like I'm about to faint yeah and um I hadn't eaten but I wasn't feeling like that mm -hmm. however I used that to go and get in the car and sit down <laughs> to go break yes I lied real tough because I'm like I'm that's tired of this like what is going on you gotta so, find some way out yeah because like you know when you fill out your packet one thing they ask you like are you are you allergic to anything yeah. or just anything medical? Mm -hmm. And I put that on there. And so I used it one night just so that I could go and take a break from yeah. what they were doing to us. Yeah. I sat in the car. So, yeah, it was just a lot of manipulation. Um, I just remember, like, our actual last night mm -hmm. of us, because at that point, it was time for us, it was close to our probate yeah. of us crossing over and everything. Mm -hmm. And I just remember um, the last night we were out there, and it got really tough because not only are we like uh practicing for our probate show for the next day yeah. that's coming up mm -hmm. um we're still getting hey so it's like they have this yes. run through everything and like you know doing a whole lot of stuff yeah. and i just remember we were out there hazy and all of a sudden cars started coming like we started seeing the lights coming through the woods and like they like get back in the car get back in the car and we thinking like oh like what's about to go oh we're going to jail because yeah. mind you this hazy stuff you can literally go to jail for it yes we're it's talking against it's against the law people have died from hazy yes, and we hear this in the, in the media and the news mm -hmm. um but come to find out it wasn't the police it was the yeah. kappas they were coming to go through their hell night because it was ah. hell night what look at y'all cross so we were like uh, talk with each other <laughs> so we get into the car and the Kappas, they out there with their boys. And um, they, so, like, now our pro fights and the Kappas, they out there talking, you know, having a good old time. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing that really bothered me is that because it was our hell night, a lot of them were drunk and drinking. Wow. So, they came that night prepared to, like, really go in on us, like, wow. even harder. Yeah. Because we were at the end of our process. And so, um, I just remember, like, one of the girls, like, they, like, the Kappas were, y'all go ahead and go first. So, they let us get back at the car and they left and they came, you know. Okay. So we got the car, we're, and like at this point, they're going in and yelling in our faces and our mm -hmm. ears, they screaming at us and stuff. And I just remember like, um, there was a point where we had to hold out our hands and they were mm -hmm. going out of line and just slapping mm -hmm. and doing this. But one mm -hmm. girl, she was so drunk on the profiles, like she was like going in wow. on my, at yeah. that point, my my hands were purple. Wow. Yeah. And so they had to like literally tell her to like stop and leave, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, you know, there were times where like people would step in and say, okay, enough is enough, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, no more, whatever. But I, that was like my hell night. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I was tired. I was like dog tired. Like. You come offline, you're looking like a straight zombie, are, okay? Because are. of the hours and the time mm -hmm. that you're putting into this. Yeah. Even like when I was preparing for like just the, the above ground, um, like test and everything yeah. that we're having to study for, like I would stand up literally until the sun came up drinking wow. Coke and drinking energy, energy drinks just to study. I was putting yeah. more studying time into that than I was my classes. Yeah. Now I will say my GPA came up online because I, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have the time for it to drop because my GPA was still so low. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they will pledge and give all their time to the sorority. Mm -hmm. That by the time they come off, like they had the GPA to become, you know, yeah. a member. Yeah. But by the time they're they come off, active. they're not active anymore. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I didn't want to be one of those. Yeah. So it was still, I was still, you know, active when I came offline. Mm. So you crossed. So I crossed, girl. And how did your life change now that you are? You earn these letters. You put in all the time, they're blessed with tears. 
my my life changed to the point where because like I put so much work I it's all about me right mm -hmm. I put so much work into this yeah. I think I've done this yes. now don't get me wrong I thought that God had a hand in it too because mm -hmm. the second time mind you I didn't make it the first time so yeah. the second time I literally was praying to God, like, God, I really want this. I was, see, I was in my mind, really think I'm seeking God. Yeah. Even to the point where I just remember, like, preparing for, uh, preparing to go out again. Yeah. I was writing scriptures, y'all. Like, this is how, like, it's like, I was writing scriptures to my, like, to myself. I remember I used to have scriptures everywhere in my dorm room. Mm. And I would wake up and I would say these scriptures and I would pray all so I could be a Delta. And I just remember, like, I would wake up, I had a, a scripture. Uh, on my ceiling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what scripture it was, but I would wake up in the morning and I would say that scripture and like asking God for me to be a Delta. Mm -hmm. And then I would go to my closet. I'm getting ready for classes and I would take off, you know, my clothes at the closet and be a scripture right there. So it was just like all of these things of me thinking I'm like seeking God about this organization. And because mm -hmm. it happened, I thought it was God. It was God. Wow. I thought it was God. Yeah, I thought it was and a blessing. I thought it was a blessing. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. I didn't get it the first time. Right? Mm -hmm. When I went back out for it again and I got it, when it was time to pay the money, I didn't even have the money. Mm. Like, my mom literally had to come up with the money to do it. That, that was another sign from God. Wow. Now I'm looking yeah. back at that. Yeah. It was like, you don't even have the money to even come into the organization. It. You can't even afford it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So, that was signs. But all this time in my mind, I'm thinking because I'm working, because I'm doing what I gotta do to get it. Yeah. This is all God. Yeah. This is yeah. all God. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now I'm crossed over, I'm a Delta now. And literally, like my life from that point, it just consisted of me. It was just like party after party. Mm -hmm. You know, like now I'm able to strut, now I'm mm -hmm. able to step, now I'm able to really like show people who I am on the campus. Yeah. It was like people didn't like people knew my name, but people still recognized me by oh Tia the Chillator. Mm -hmm. Oh now Tia the Delta, like yeah. Tia the Delta. So it was yeah. like having that type of access and having like that type of status yeah. it was you know it was a, it was prideful it was a thing that you really because you work for this yes, right yeah so people needed to you want people to respect they you and respect to see you. it yeah so my life changed it changed to the point where you know i was still like doing how to do my classes i was working for delta i was active and things like that mm -hmm. but uh, when I look back now, back now, it changed to a point. It changed really for the worse, I think. Yeah, you know, right. because your character really does change. Mm -hmm. You are holding yourself up to this very high esteem. You you're yeah. looking down on people. Yes. Um, especially you, if they're not Greek. It's, yeah, especially if they're not Greek. It's like yeah. I I I earned this. Mm -hmm. You need to respect it. And so um, some people like they and some people say it. Like some students that were not Greek, they're like, oh y'all changed. Yes. Like, who are y'all? Yes. You know. Yeah. And in your mind, you're like, well. Yeah, I changed for the belt for the better. For the better. Yes. Delta changed me. Cause yes. here's another, here's another reason why I chose Delta, right? Mm -hmm. In my mind back then, I thought that it would have been easy for me to be an AKA. Mm -hmm. I just think, you know, yes. like the stereotypes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me in my mind, I wanted to be a Delta because I love how Delta they pride themselves on like education. They were strong women, they were yeah. independent women. Mm -hmm. Um they were women that was just serious of everything. And I it's like for me, I in my mind I'm like, Lord, if I could just be one of them, I have proved something. Mm -hmm. If I can be one of them, my identity, like yeah. I know who I am, yeah. like to yeah. prove that I can be this, like because I considered myself as an underdog. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have a high GPA, I came in with women who had very high GPAs. They were very smart girls. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm the underdog, but if I can work for this, mm -hmm. like, it's t it's talking about something. Yeah. I proved this to y'all, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just funny how I, like, really lowered my, my like, who I am. Mm -hmm. First of all, as a child of God and who God yeah. says we are, yes. I lowered myself, my standards, and what God would have, you know, like, called me to be. <laughs> And so yeah, so but like when I'm when I'm thinking about just who I was coming off crossing, yeah, it really got worse. Um, I just became this person where I'm like, you know, like I said, high status. I'm conceited. Yes. I conceded. think I'm somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, but one mm -hmm. thing that kind of like really heightened was the partying, the going out, partying, yeah. clubbing, drinking, yes, sex, 
all right. these things that happens in organizations that people don't talk about like yeah and, and not to say that oh they made me do it but this is what comes with the territory yeah. like when you're in it's that atmosphere it's a culture yeah. it's a tradition it's what mm -hmm. happens it's like mm -hmm. it's really a spirit it's the atmosphere of everything like yeah. i don't care if you're this young girl who say like i want to come in i want to change it or i know who i am and mm -hmm. i'm going to be that same person when it's like birds of a feather flock together so mm -hmm. when you get into that atmosphere that's what you become and that's what yes. you do yeah. and it's like and then you think that's just the way to have fun this is mm -hmm. life this is what i'm supposed to do so i'm going to parties mm -hmm. i'm clubbing i'm getting sloppy drunk i'm doing all of these things and it's just like but and it's a thing we say that's a it's a christian organization but nobody ever none of my sisters at the time ever came to me and said hey sis no yeah, right. you should not because do this, this God, word of God, you know like God. you shouldn't do this like i think that this is too much like mm -hmm. hey what about your relationship with god you did say you are a christian like yeah. when last time you been to church like nobody ever did this because we were all doing the same thing, the same thing. so you you know you prideful mm -hmm. you conceited you know you this this big delta woman on campus mm -hmm. but now you're not greek so <laughs> <laughs> How did that transition to my lord being a Delta woman to now being a woman of God? Woo! Yes. Oh my gosh, it was a long journey. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in Delta for six, seven years. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and so, so after I graduated college, um, things just started to change for me. So before mm -hmm. I graduated, I became I was in a relationship. I came, you know, got in a relationship mm -hmm. with my now husband. And um, I'm saying I graduated 2013, mm -hmm. and so after I graduated, my husband and I we decided we wanted to you know come together mm -hmm. and merge our plans, or whatever. He had gone off to the military, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah, so he went off to the military. And one of our first duty stations was Japan. Okay. So I left home and everything wow. for the first time on a whole different side of the world, moved to Japan with my husband. Wow. And that was where I really found God for mm -hmm. myself. That's really where things start to change and take off um, in my walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you hear a lot of stories where we grew up in church. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've gone to church my whole life. I know yeah. who God is. But it's like something changed for me. It was yeah. like, you know, like, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I really haven't been doing this walk like, like the, seriously like seriously yeah. like what, what mm -hmm. god calls for us to do and yeah. so you know being in japan at the time i was really young i was probably about 23 24 years mm -hmm. old um and i didn't have any family any friends so that's where god really met me at. it's kind of like the abraham mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. you know we always talk about that he leaving from his family his yeah. friends and everything and that literally was my life. Like I picked mm -hmm. up and I moved from everybody with my husband. Yeah. And so the only person I had to depend on was God. Yeah. So I had to get to know him, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, I just remember being there by myself um, and like my husband would, you know, go on deployments for like three, four months out yeah. of the year. And like it got to a point where I was reading my Bible, but at that time I was just kind of studying it. Not really, I didn't have like a really a, re a relationship. Yeah. I wasn't really filled with the spirit of God either. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's why I think it was so hard for me to really understand like this whole why is Greek or, or uh, Greek organizations not of God yeah. because I didn't have the spirit of God teaching me. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't mm -hmm. walking with Holy Spirit, yeah. and so um, I just remember. That 2000, I want to say either 17 or 18, mm -hmm. um, I'm walking with God. I'm, I'm reading every day. I'm studying and things like that. But then God calls for me to get re-baptized and mm -hmm. rededicate my life back to him. Come on now. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I decided to do that. Mm -hmm. I did. And mm -hmm. I will say that as soon as I rededicated my, my life back to Christ yeah. and I got rebaptized, it's almost like a light bulb switched on. Mm. It's like from that point, I was truly spirit filled with the spirit of yeah. God. And I just remember, like, God took me on a journey of just, like, things that he was, like, pruning me away, you know, of, like, just mm -hmm. a, a detached, stripping yeah. me from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, where did my journey, my journey start with actually coming out? I just remember... Because um, you, you were active in Japan, right? Yes. Yeah. That's a good yes. So, I was actually active. Yes. So, when I got to Japan... Um, reaching out to one of the chapters there was the first thing I did because in my mind, I'm like, I'm going over here. Like I need to know some you people. Some so I got to have some sisterhood. Yeah. So it was really, I thought it was really nice to, you know, it was to have them there. So I reached out to them. I was one of the youngest ladies, you know, in the organization oh, so chapter. They was, they was like, come so they're on. like, come on, we yeah, need some work. So, <laughs> so um, I get there and I'm active 
probably about two years, okay. I guess. Maybe about two years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm active there in the chapter. I'm, I became chaplain. Mm -hmm. I am one of the stepmasters. Wow. So, like, I'm really active. Yeah. I'm really active. And, um, and so, yeah, so I'm doing that for about two years and everything. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that uh, when God started dealing with me about coming out, it first started with my love and my passion for Delta started to kind of, like, go yeah. away. And I didn't understand why. Yeah. I just remember, like, when I would talk to my line sisters at the time on the mm -hmm. phone, and they would come telling me about, like, oh, a new line is coming off mm -hmm. and what's going on. Yes. I, was, I just got irritated. Yes, yeah, same. I got yeah, irritated. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want to talk about this. I don't this. care. Like, I don't care. Like, yeah. don't have no girl calling my phone yeah <laughs> yes you know <laughs> so i didn't understand what that was about but of course i was continuing to be active in everything in the chapter yeah and i remember um what like what the year that i was you know about to go through this journey and everything mm -hmm. i remember i became really cool with other military spouses yeah and there was she's now still a sister and a friend of mine to this day but i got invited to a dinner one one night yeah and i'm at this dinner and there's other there's some people there that still you know this greek and everything yeah and we're all talking. I don't even know how we got to talking about uh, Greek life. Mm -hmm. And I just remember hearing this young lady who I did not know at the time. She was like, yeah, um, I used to be Greek. I used to be AK, but I'm not an AK anymore. And I kind of looked at her like, what? Like, what do you mean? Yeah. You know? And I was like, what do you mean you're not like, did you like denounce or something? You know, I didn't even know what dancing was. Yeah. And she was like, yes. And so I was like, you know, why? Like, what was the reason behind yeah. it? <laughs> and so she tells me and everything. And I was like, oh, okay. And I, and I just remember that one thing that I did not do to people is when they would tell me their reason why I never rebelled, I never got angry, I never yeah. was like, oh, that's like, you know, that's crazy, that's mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the most dangerous things that we can do as Christians, yeah. following Christ, where when you hear people denounce and come in and renounce their organizations, mm -hmm. you get defensive, you get yeah. angry, you, get, you feel some type of way, you try mm -hmm. to come back with something to just justify why yeah. it's okay right yeah. Yeah. and so um i remember her telling me this and i remember telling her these words i said you know i understand why i said i understand mm -hmm. why people denounce mm -hmm. i said and if god ever tells me to i said i probably would mm -hmm. My Lord Lord. Said, all right we got that on record. <laughs> she said <laughs> we got that down all wow. right Holy Spirit. Yes, girl and I remember wow. from that conversation, there would be other conversations that I would have with the Deltas, and they would talk about women who left Japan, and it's like they denounced. I'm like, what? You know? And I just remember I was at one person always saying, well, it depends on how you, how serious you do take your walk with Christ. Like, I was mm -hmm. always kind of like, you know? Uh, uh -huh. So, from that conversation, that's where it all started. That was a seed. That was a seed that was planted in me. And God began to deal with me. I don't know how long, uh, how you know, how much time went by before it really started to come. But I just remember when it started, one night, my husband was deployed. I was there by myself. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was, I had went to bed one night and I could not sleep. Mm -hmm. Could not sleep. And I was just wondering like what was going on like why can i not i'm yeah. up all night like restless. a cat i'm restless mm -hmm. and i just remember lord like whatever it is whatever you're trying to show me like yes. i want my sleep you yeah know? <laughs> and i remember calling my mom like mom i just cannot sleep like you know i don't know what's going on but i can't sleep and she was like well tia pray the scripture blah blah yeah. and i still couldn't sleep mm -hmm. so i remember asking i said god whatever you're trying to show me or reveal to me I need you to tell me because I mm -hmm. want rest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I remember Holy Spirit said, take your Bible and take your ritual and compare it. Because also, going back a little bit, what started to happen with me when I told you that I was starting to like not really care about Delta anymore, mm -hmm. I started to notice that as a chaplain, you know, in the chapter, yes. I'm this chaplain I'm praying scripts. You know, everybody say, well, we, there's Christians a part of it. We pray. We do, th we do these things. Yes, we do. However, mm -hmm. that does not mean that God is in it. Yeah. And I just remember being the chaplain of this chapter and I would pray and I would say scriptures, but I felt so empty. Mm -hmm. I felt so mm -hmm. empty. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, one day being in our chapter meeting and there was a certain passage in yes. there that a lot of us recognize when yes. we come into the spirit of God. Like I was saying this, this passage and I was like, oh, that sounds so familiar. Yeah. Like the word, it sounded so familiar. I'm like, what is that? Yeah. And that's when I went to bed and had the rest of the night and the guy was like, 
Take your Bible, yes. take a ritual. Yes. And as I'm reading the Bible and the ritual, 1 Corinthians 13 comes up, yes. right? Yes. Um, about love is kind, love yes. is this, love is that. And what Delta did, love is did, patient. Love is love patient. Is kind, yes. Does not boast, does not envy. There you yeah. go. Mm -hmm. And um, we have that in our ritual for yes. Delta. Yes. And it says that, but something a with sore, Delta. A sore is patient. A soror is kind. Mm -hmm. She does not boast. She does not envy. Yeah. And it was just like, whoa, like, what is this? Took out love. Took out love. And added Delta. And, added Delta. Yeah. and we know that the word says you don't add or take away yeah, from take away him, from the from the scripture. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, huh. And so that little seed kind of stayed yeah, like, there. Okay. Okay, and so I'm keep I'm keep going about you know my time being active in the chapter, and it got to, it got to a point where um, it was time for us to have a line yes. there in Japan. Yes. So I remember like we had to fly to mind you, I'm in Japan. We had to fly to Korea to prepare for this line. Wow. To you know prepare for like the, the ceremonies and everything that take place. Mm -hmm. We met up with other sewers at the time um, in Korea that was there deltas, mm -hmm. and we're going and going over everything. And so I remember. Um, I flew to Korea. I'm with these other deltas. We're preparing for the line and everything. And as a chaplain, we're one day, you know, in our class and we're going over things, ritual books and stuff, and mm -hmm. how to even have a process. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, we were standing up and we were going over our stuff. And uh, because I was chaplain, I had to read a certain, you know, mm -hmm. certain parts in the book. Mm -hmm. And I just remember. There was a part, and I can't even tell you what it was, but it was a part that I read in there. We're lined up in our black and everything, mm -hmm. and I just stopped. And I go, did I say this when I became a Delta? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just kind of came out. Yeah. And I just, I was stuck. And I remember a story that was yes. next to me, and she goes, yeah, you said it. Mm -hmm. You said it when you became a Delta? And I was just like, you know? Yeah. So I still even couldn't comprehend what it was saying, but yeah. I'm like, something don't seem yeah. right. This is, we shouldn't be this saying is, we shouldn't this. Be, yeah, we shouldn't yeah. say this. Wow. And so, yeah, so time go on. And I, and here's the thing, mm -hmm. when all this is going on, it wasn't until a year had passed before I, when I actually denounced. Yeah. So, so it's a whole year. It's a whole year. I'm kind of wrestling. Of wrestling. Yeah. yeah because mm -hmm. I'm just like, God, what is, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to understand. Yeah. And so from there, I'm still active and everything. And mm -hmm. I just remember like, I had a dream mm -hmm. one night. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a dream one night. I went to sleep. And time was going by and I have this dream. And in this dream, I am at this house party yeah. with other Greeks. Mm -hmm. And I remember there's only one way into this house or party or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was a house, yeah. but it was only one way in and one way out. There was no back door or anything. Yeah. And I remember the house caught on fire. Mm. At this house party, like it caught on fire. And I'm like, we, everybody trying to get out. Yeah. Everyone trying to get out, you know. And um, I had got out by this much mm. out of the house. Mm -hmm. And I ran and I looked back and the whole house was like burnt down. Mm -hmm. I was the only person that got out, literally. And I woke up out of my dream and it's like physically, in the natural, yes. I could feel I was hot. Wow. Like I felt like I was burning up. I was sweating when I actually woke up from the dream. And I was like, what in the world is going on? Yeah. Like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And I just heard God say, get out before it's too late. And Ooh. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. And so I started crying. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. And I remember calling like my best friend and like other sisters that I was really close to. Yeah. Else, and I'm like, y'all, like. I think God is telling me to denounce. Yeah, come out. Like, to come out of this thing. Yeah. And I didn't understand. Mm. So, I'm still trying to kind of gather, comprehend what's going on. And yeah. I just remember, I end up contacting the girl from the dinner. Yes. Her name is Gianna. Uh -huh. And I remember okay, they had to that, mm -hmm. yeah. I found her on Facebook. I reached out and I said, hey, I said, can wow. we talk? Mm -hmm. You know, can we talk? Yeah. Can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember hitting her up and um, she said, yes, yeah. so we met at Starbucks there on the base that year. Mm -hmm. And she was there waiting for me. And as soon as I walked through the door and I sat down, she said, you're about to denounce. Mm. And I was like. Why you she say that? Knew. She already knew. Yeah. I said, why you say that? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, you've been battling. She said, you've been battling, you've been wrestling. Come on now. And I was just, I was nervous. Mm -hmm. I can just cry now. Like, I was nervous. I didn't understand, like, whew, yeah. what was going on. And so... Yeah. Um, she was there. She held. She held my hand throughout the whole thing. Ooh, she encouraged God. me. She supported me. 
she really gave me answers to my questions and to where mm-hmm. I was confused at. Mm-hmm. And I just remember when I gave God my yes, mm-hmm. God used my son. Because mm-hmm. our son had had a baby by the time at that point, mm-hmm. and he was only maybe one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just remember that I had been bow- I, mean, I had been crying every day. Yeah. And the thing is, like God was taking me through a journey because it was like I was going through that. I there was a it was a point too where I was trying to find a job while we were in yeah. Japan. So I was really like mentally mentally and spiritually going through things. I just could not put into words. Like I felt I was angry at God. Yeah. So I'm like God, why yeah. am I going through this? Like mm-hmm. what is happening? You know. Mm-hmm. And I just remember one morning um, after I had that conversation with her, I was getting ready to go. I used to volunteer at this school on, on the military base mm-hmm. and. Um, God used my son one morning. We woke up, we were getting ready. Mind you, my husband's still deployed. I'm doing all this by myself. I'm Mm -hmm. like going through these things by Mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm feeding my son and he's sitting at the table and um, he's eating some oatmeal. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I already knew like, hey, we got to go. I'm going to give him a banana, you know, Mm -hmm. as we're walking out the door or whatever. So Mm -hmm. I go to the table to my son and I'm getting ready to take the bowl from him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the banana in my hand just yet, but I Mm -hmm. knew in my mind, you know, I was going to give it to him. So as I'm taking this bowl away from him, he starts crying and throwing a fit and mm-hmm, everything. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, I heard the Holy Spirit say, this is you. Mm. This is you. Mm. All you see is I'm trying to take something from you, but you don't know what I'm trying to do in your life. Yeah. You don't know what I'm trying to give you. Yeah, replace it with. Wow. <sighs> mm. And I literally started crying right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, tears <laughs> were just coming down. Wow. And I was just like, okay. Mm-hmm. So even though I couldn't understand what the Lord was trying to do, I knew that there was something about this. There was something, yeah. there was a reason why he was calling me to get out of it. Yeah. And so um, from that day, I said, okay, I said yes to you guys. Yeah. I said yes. I'm out. I'm out. And I wrote my letter. I remember writing my letter. Mm-hmm. And I kind of held on to it for about a week. Mm. I held on to it. Mm -hmm. Because at this point, I'm like talking to people. I'm like, yeah, I think this is what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so um, I get, I, you know, held on to it or whatever. And I want to say that, I don't know, something else I may have happened in between that time where I was like, okay, let me just go ahead and get it out. I think it was Mm -hmm. because I was still restless. I was still anxious and just, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't get rest. Yeah. And so this that's when I was like, okay, let me go and take this letter and, you know, send it off. Yeah. So I send the letter off and everything. And I want to say that because, like, in the spirit, because in, that, in my personal, uh, you know, just relationship with God, because I had given him my yes yeah. and I sent the letter off, God started to do something. I, had, yeah. I remember there was a job that I had, you know, applied yeah. for. I got it, like, literally that day. Wow. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. God. So, you know, things are going to start happening because, because of my obedience. Yes. But then also one thing I didn't realize is that when I gave God my yes, that's also when the challenges was going to come too. Mm-hmm. Yes. I remember like talking yes. to like my pastor and his wife about, you know, what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I remember one of the things that he said, he was like, you know, I may not know much about, you know, the, the, the uh, divine nine or anything like that. He said, mm-hmm. but I do know this. That what it's what you have to do to get into it. Yeah. To say that you are a sister, to say that you are a brother, yeah. the rituals, the oaths, that is not of God. Yeah. And he was like, and so now that you have given God your yes and you're coming out, mm-hmm. you do know you're gonna have to let people know that you're not a part of this yes. no more. And I was like, Am yeah, I really no yeah. God? <laughs> and so I just remember <laughs> that day when I gave God my yes. I you know, I turned I uh, turned my letter in, I sent it off and everything, mm-hmm. I got the job. That day, God challenged me. Mm-hmm. I remember going to church that evening. We had a Bible study, mm-hmm. and after uh, after the service, this guy comes up to me. And he was uh, he's a Sigma, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Hey, sis, I need for you to uh, come and do this like Greek photo shoot and everything, mm-hmm. you know, for me. And I need some deltas and stuff like that." And I was like, "Mm mm, get somebody to do it." <laughs> Like, why you can't do it? He's just really nudging, you wow. know? And I'm like, no. Like, I, you know, I just probably won't have time. And he, and he stopped me right there. He said, you about to denounce, huh? Mm. And I was like, wow. And then I could just feel heat, like, just coming up. And just, I felt like, literally, that there was God on one side and just, like, the enemy yes. on the other side. Like, what you gonna say? What yes. you gonna say? What you gonna say? Yes. And then from, that was the first person where I was like, yes, mm. I denounced. And I was like, wow. And what do you say? And he was just like, you know what? He was like, I mean, I understand. And then he was like, but, you know, for me, I think I could bring people to Christ. Why do, why does, that's, that's how you know it's a conviction. Because, like, why do you, why are you justifying something I didn't even ask you about? Yeah. He was like, I feel like I could bring people to Christ. He got the conviction. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. While I'm in it. 
And I was just kind of like, oh, okay. Because at that at, um, because at that point, I really felt like it was just really a personal conviction, like a lot of people yeah, think. Yeah. I just thought that, oh, this is something that God is just telling me. Yes. You know, so yes. I was just like, oh, okay. You mm -hmm. know, I still didn't quite understand mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. Um, and, so, and so, yeah, mm -hmm. so from that point, I was just now trying to walk out what was going on. And I just remember going through the process and letting the headquarters know that this is what I was going to do because they reached out to me and they, you know, they wanted to have a conversation about my yeah. reason why. And in, and in their mind, they're like, you know, well, if anything happened within the organization or in the mm -hmm. chapter that you are in, you may want to give it some time to think about, you know, your decision because once this is it, that's it. Yeah. And so they wanted to give me a week to really decide if this is what I wanted. Mm. And I remember getting off of the phone with them and I heard Holy Spirit immediately said, no, you yeah. email them right now and you tell them no. Yes. And so that's what I did. I didn't wait a week. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and emailed them and was like, I'm done. The same day. Yeah. yeah. And so maybe a couple uh -huh. months went by and they, you know, sent everything officially and I was out of the organization. Oh, yeah. wow. In 2018. 2018, 2018. I think. 20, yeah, 2018. So how has 2018 to 2023 been? That time span of coming wow. to the full truth. It's not just a person. It's not just a yeah. It's, it's a requirement for all of us children yes. to get out of these organizations. And yeah, right. I think that you know that happened in 2018. So I I didn't leave Japan until 2019. Mm -hmm. So like after I had given God my yes and came out, you know, I had a year where I was kind of relaxed. I was kind of like, well, you know, I can't, you know, I'm not going to receive too much backlash because I'm over here. Yeah, you're hot in Japan. You know, and I just remember, uh, like, when I came out, like, at that time, like I said, I didn't feel the need to, like, tell people that mm -hmm. I did, just the close people I was close, you know, I was close to. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that, you know, like, many of us would get that conviction of, like, God saying no. It's time for you to go public with this. Mm -hmm. And so many people wonder why we do it public, yeah. but... Like, Holy Spirit has revealed to us, like, we were loud and proud going into it, yeah. posting our pictures yes. and doing all of these things. Yes. Why would I not want to now let people know that I'm, I no longer have anything to do with it? Right. Especially because God told me to do it. Yeah. And beca especially because this is a God thing. Like, this is my walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. And, like, with Christ as disciples, we're called to go out and share the gospel. We're called yeah. to share our testimony yes. in hopes to help other people and bring yes. people into knowledge and in the truth yes and so i just remember that um for a long time i actually tried to make a video because mm -hmm. like at that time I, that's why i saw a lot of people doing yeah. so i'm like okay well maybe i should make a video and yeah. you know post it but every time i got ready to sit down and post this video it just was not happening mm -hmm. <laughs> it was not happening I, yeah the holy spirit was like i didn't call you to do this yeah. and i remember the lord gave me a word um and he said um, this is not what I called you to do. He mm -hmm. said, I'm going to use you and just who you are, your mm -hmm. personality, your character. I'm going to bring people to you. Yeah. Yeah. Insert me. Insert. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. So what I did was I just went ahead and I just posted this long message on uh, Facebook, yes. the status. And I let people knew, know that I was out then, that way, yeah. Um, yeah. publicly. And it's I, like literally that day when I posted that Facebook status, I can you not, it felt like a weight had been lifted. Come on now. Like I remember sitting down, I just dropped to the floor in my house. I dropped to the floor and I was on my, on my, sitting on my wall on the floor and I was just like, <sighs> wow, that's fierce. It was just like a weight. It was yeah. just like, and I just started crying and I was just mm. like, Lord. And I remember my best friend, she said, she said, how do you feel? And I said, I just, I feel good. Yes. And so, but God gave me that prophetic word. He said, you know, I'm going to use you. Yes. I am going to use you. I remember him saying that, but I just didn't know when. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so this journey of now we are, you know, we're leaving from Japan. We yeah. now are stationed in California. Yeah. And, um, if there was some anxious, there was some anxiety coming back to, to, to the U S it yes. was because like I said, I just didn't know like how people were going to feel, what people were going to mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. Um, I was so used, I was a girl who was so used to being loyal to people. And like, yeah. I didn't want to mess up their loyalty. I didn't want to mess up if people hit like, because people helped me get into the organization, I didn't yeah. want to mess up those relationships. So there was yeah. a lot of, um, just like pressure that came with it of like, me looking at people more than I looked at God and what yeah. did God say? Like my loyalty to people was way more than it was to God. Mm -hmm. And so I was more fearful of man, yeah. right? And my, my identity was so wrapped up in Delta. So yeah. um, coming back to the mm -hmm. side, I was scared because 
I I had I had also became isolated too. Yeah. I had became I had closed myself off to people, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just started to realize that it wasn't so much it was it was the things that I was a part of. I was a cheerleader, I was a delta. That's what made me social. That's what made me have yeah. friends. Yeah. But now that these things were taken away, I'm like, who am I really? Yeah. Like God, who who am I? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's when God was like, Your identity is in me. I need that's for you it. to begin to search and seek of who you are in me. Yeah. So yeah, so I that's what I began to do. And I started to, you know, strengthen in my walk with Christ. Um, and so being in California, uh, all of a sudden, it's just like something switched. And like, I started having a lot of people reaching out to mm-hmm. me about their, you know, journey of coming out. The yeah. mm-hmm. And it was like, a, I can't even count my fingers. It was like so many people. I'm like, yeah. Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And so I had to kind of like. Fulfilling the prophecy. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was fulfilling the, the prophecy. The prophecy yeah. Yes. And so mm-hmm. I started having so many people like come to me and like asking me like, hey, you know, I know that you denounced or whatever. How was that? I had questions mm-hmm. and everything. And so I was like, okay. And I would talk to people, you know, mm-hmm. that's how you're not connected. And I yeah. would tell, share, share my testimony with people. And people was like, I feel the same thing. I feel yeah. like the Lord is calling me to do this. And I'm like, okay, you know, I would, I would help them. Yeah. Um, and so then uh february of what 2022 when we did yes. that live uh-huh. um mm-hmm. that's what th- that's where god began to reveal to me that this was a part of my ministry now yeah. that mm-hmm. there is no running away from this that yeah. now you have a call like a purpose within this and that is yes. sharing the truth and like helping yes. people like to wake up to like this is not of me yeah you know mm-hmm. and so um that's when god called for me to do like my first live event on facebook mm-hmm. and on youtube I invited some women, including Lala, um, women who were out of their Greek organizations, and we did a live, yeah. and we were just talking about it, sharing our testimony, mm-hmm. and once again, that was a journey that I had to take because I was like, yes. those same feelings that I had of coming out, they started to rile up again. There yes. was fear. The enemy was really trying to take my mind, yes. trying to tell me that I you know, don't need to do this and yeah. everything, and I just mm-hmm. remember going to God, I'm like, God, is this what you're calling me to do? Mm-hmm. Like, you want me to go live yes. and do this? Yeah. And I was like... I remember telling God, I said, Lord, okay, if this is what you're telling me to do, I'm going to call Gianna. Mm-hmm. And I said, and I'm going to need for her to like, you got to send some kind of, some kind of confirmation. Yes. <laughs> and so I called her. I'm like, hey, I need for you to pray, pray this, you know, with me or whatever. And she called me next day. And she said, yeah. Yeah. She said, I was in the shower and this is what. And, I, and that day, I dropped to my knees and I remember the Lord, he was speaking to me about what he wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, Lord. Mm-hmm. And so, with the whole series entitled "The Get Out Now," you help, like you helped yes. me came along with yes. it because I'm like, I heard him say this, but you're like, no, I think it needs to be this, and I was yeah. like, okay. And so it all came together, and that's where it started with like, now this is a part of my ministry, yeah. it's a part of our ministry. Like, yeah. and honestly, we all have a job, a hand. This is part yeah. of our ministry where now we're called to to bring truth into yeah. this so that other people can know, like. God want his children out of this. And yes. th- thankfully, he is snatching his children out of this yes. in this hour. There are so many people that's waking up to this and they're mm-hmm. coming out. And so mm-hmm. that's that's my journey now. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yes. I did one with the guys as well. Yes. We did a fraternity one with me and coming and sharing their testimony. And that's very powerful. Yes. So that's what I'm at now. Yeah. That's a blessing. So yes, what advice would you give mm-hmm. to somebody watching that, you know, fills the tug, mm-hmm. but they feeling the same thing anxious my god fear yeah nervousness i you know i know that it sounds so cliche but it's the truth like when we're saying seek god Mm -hmm. you know um Mm -hmm. as a believer of christ like our foundation should be the word anyway right Mm -hmm. and so because it is our foundation that means that we should be using the word to make decisions yes to know what we what we should and should not be doing like that is my advice is if you are a believer you're a professing believer in jesus christ yeah I encourage you to keep the word, the foundation Mm -hmm. of the Bible to help you make decisions on this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I also just want to encourage people that if this is something that you know that the Lord is tugging at you, to um, also, like, not only bring God into it and seek God about it, but ask yourself, like, who are you more loyal to? Like, are you more loyal to God 
or to people are you yeah. more worried about what people are going to say and i think that like yeah. you know a lot of us are have actually experienced that where it's like our loyalty do reside with people more mm -hmm. um and so when you're like when that answer like when that clicks into your mind that it's because your loyalty is with people yeah that right there should be your answer that i have given my power to people i have given my mm -hmm. identity to this thing it's a mm -hmm. stronghold yes. because i can't even just say yes to god immediately yeah. right i can't just mm -hmm. give god, god my yes and walk away from that and it's because mm -hmm. our identity um our jobs our promotions yes. everything we have attached to these organizations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so that would be my encouragement is to keep the lord the word as your foundation to make decisions yeah. and to ask yourself who are you more loyal to especially in this hour yes yeah. Well, glory to God. Yeah. So, thank you for coming on to my channel and share your testimony, my friend. <laughs> and the Lord Holy Spirit thank wants you. me to um, know mm -hmm. if you want to plug your Bible studies for oh, women of God that yes. might want to, you know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so that's good. I have a women's ministry called Sisters with Purpose. Yes. I've had it for like the last maybe six, seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do Bible study every Monday yes. at 6.30. Is it 6.30? Yes, you're 6.30. 6.30, Central Standard Nine, Time. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's via Google Meets. And so, um, well, I can add all of my information into there. Yeah, social know. media. Yeah, um, I'm on Instagram as Tia Rock. And I'm on Facebook as Tia Rockwell. Yes. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much you're for welcome. joining. You're welcome. I'm so thankful for the honor. Oh, my ah. God. Oh, so, okay. So, um, this is like behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And we are... Uh, just sitting on the couch and we're just kind of having a conversation and kind of like going over the video from earlier mm -hmm. and I was telling Lala how Holy Spirit was just now kind of like bringing more things back to um, memory yeah. right and that's one of the things that happens like when you're going through a pledging process like you really forget about the things that you go through yeah. um, and so but thank God for Holy Spirit so I was sitting here talking to her and I was telling her how I forgot to share with you all that um one of the things that I went through uh, during my pledging process is even after I was already a Delta, um, a whole year went by. Mm -hmm. And we have this thing where when it's time for you to now uh, prepare to bring off a new line into Delta. To become a pro fight. To become a pro fight. Mm -hmm. um, we have this thing where you now have to receive your licks, right? So I just, I was telling her how, um, I remember for Delta weekend. Like what's licks? Licks meaning paddle, right? Mm -hmm. So wood. you use wood, you take mm -hmm. wood, like an actual paddle. Um, and so I just remember for mm -hmm. close to our one year, our Delta weekend came up in college. And Delta weekend is where we, the Deltas put on a lot of activities and festivities for the campus and for the, you know, the students to attend. So we had mm -hmm. like the Delta pageant, we had a Delta picnic, a Delta yeah. party, like everything is just dedicated to Deltas for that weekend. Yeah. Um, and so for our uh, Delta pageant, um, this particular night, we were working and preparing to put it on. Mm -hmm. And I just remember working the pageant and I received a text message. And this text message consisted of information about how our, um, our profiles and O-heads they were in town, they were visiting for Delta weekend, and mm -hmm. they basically told us that, you know, it was time for us to receive our, our licks, our one-year licks. Um, and so even after we were Delta's for a whole year, we now had to go pretty much back online for one night wow. um, and to get haze. Mm -hmm. And our hazing involved, I had to get nine paddles for the licks jewels. for the jewels. So... Delta, they have, you know, we have nine jewels mm -hmm. that uh, represent the or represents the organization. Mm -hmm. And so I just remember we once again met at like a central location. In the my, woods, in right? The, mm -hmm. Well, it was at a park. Oh, at a park. Uh, it was at a park. Yeah, it was at a park. And I was with my, you know, line sisters at the time. Mm -hmm. And once again, we had to get into cars, you know, by a certain number. Mm -hmm. And when we get out there women that were Delta's old heads they came they met us out there they lined us up but we had to link up into a circle so we're linked up we're in a circle and they get the paddle and now they are going around the circle and they and everybody's now receiving their licks their paddles mm. and I had to take nine licks with the paddle wow and that right there you said did you say you said that you like passed like you you passed out like yeah like i remember screaming. when they when they when they got to me and i'm sitting there taking my legs 
you know, before they before we even received the licks, they showed us how to get into position, right? Mm. How to get into the into the to, uh, stance. And so, wow. when it was my time, they're sitting there hitting me with the with the paddle, and I broke to, to the point where like my legs, I like fell to the ground. Mm. And they're like, pick her back up, and I, you know, get up and I finish receiving my licks and everything. And I'm like, I scream because it hurts, wow. mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I was also telling Lala how even doing my pre play pre-pledging process and mm-hmm. this is before i actually got online um uh, one of the things that um uh, that my mom my mom she never actually wanted me to join delta yeah. um i remember going back and telling my mom that i wanted to join this organization in college and my mom was always against it mm-hmm. and she mm-hmm. was against it because in her eyes even though she didn't have like a lot of information about the organization She just always told me that anything I had to do in the dark and I couldn't tell her that was secret, it was not of God. Mm. And so um, I didn't listen. I went forward and I pledged and everything. And I just remember like while pre-pledging, I remember coming home one weekend to visit my mom and as I had to take a shower. Mm. And as I was getting out the shower, I had a whelp on my back and my mom saw it. And she came to me and she, you know, pointed out and she asked me like, was this from, you know, pledging and everything? And she was just upset because she's like, you know, uh, I hope you're not letting people put their hands on you and mm. things like that. And so, yeah, it was just really sad. And I just really wanted to come back on here and share it with you all, like even in our glory, mm-hmm. um, because Holy Spirit will continue to like bring things back up. Because once yeah. again, like I said, when you pledge, especially after so many years, yeah. you forget the things that happened. Mm-hmm. But I also think that is how the enemy get a lot of us and oh, a lot of people. Oh, yes, for sure. Yeah. For sure. That's why you have so many like older people who have been in these Greek organizations mm-hmm. for years. Yeah. And when you actually ask them questions or bring it back up, they cannot remember. Yeah. And that's how the enemy gets us. That's how that's, that deception comes in because mm-hmm. in their minds, we are a non-hazing organization. Yeah. They forget the steps and the things that they actually did to get into the organization. That's correct. And all they think about is life after, which is like the, you know, the service yeah. and the sisterhood and, yes. you know, working out in the community. But they never, for, they never remember the things they actually did to get into it. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah. So. And I just wanted to add really fast mm-hmm. while we're here, like, even if you don't pledge, even the above ground, there is still a level of hazing. Yes. Every organization, mm-hmm. you are not treated kindly. It is not a pleasant experience. It is very much hazing yeah. for above ground as well. So exactly. even if somebody's like, I didn't have a process, I didn't do underground, I didn't pledge, mm-hmm. you still did above ground, which was not, they were not treating you like you were a human being because yeah. you were online, like you were still mm-hmm. online when you had an above ground process. So I don't, yeah. I just want to, like debunk this whole like well I didn't have an underground process right. but you were still because, hazed and you were still hazed and also the doctrines yeah right? the, they're all the same the, the rituals, rituals all the, the oaths that mm-hmm. you take and that you commit yourself to yeah it's still problematic it's yes, still it not of God mm-hmm. so thank y'all so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and comment bye